Hey, folks. Wow. Hello. Happy Hitler's on the call today. Sarah, great to see you. You're on mute, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks. I hear you're flying a new flag. How's AWS? Good. Yeah, they haven't fired me yet, so I think I'm doing pretty well. An important starting point, but you know, good to set it's the It's only a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we'll see. Actually, days fly by because I'm getting close to three months, if you can believe it. What? Wow. A couple 12 weeks? <laughs> yeah, a couple 12. Exactly. I'm just lurking, so I'm going to uh, go back off video and sit and mute and be quiet. No problem. And, you know, I think we'll wait another minute or so. I, I've been chatting on and off with Steve and a few others all day. Or, well, all day is maybe a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I actually did a few other things today. But, um, yeah, I'd love to just kind of say a few words and kind of frame, um, I think, uh, try and frame. Uh, I'm sure I won't collect everyone's uh, perception of where we are with the discussions, but um, I will attempt to because I have to somehow get my paycheck for being the OCI TOB chair. So Chris won't pay me if I don't do this once in a while. No. Wait, there's a paycheck with that, <laughs> that chair? We, we get a polo every year delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get a free KubeCon t-shirt from Chris. Very cool. I thought I was special. <laughs> <laughs> Been a while, Sarah. Well, welcome to the group. Thank you. It's been a while. Waving at everybody because I think that's like half the people here. Hi, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think, it's got to be at least two years since they joined in OCI calls. So it's fun to see where y'all are. Yeah, it's a good good day to join, I think. Or maybe not. <laughs> we'll, we'll... <laughs> Yeah. We can, we'll have a rating uh, window yeah. pop up at the end, like the little five stars. Kumbaya. We can do it with em emoji reactions. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I truly mm -hmm. wish Hack, HackMD was built into GitHub. Ah, it's just a pain in the butt, so sorry. Well, you can, you can make it sync. Uh, I didn't yeah, I know, I'm just that. lazy. But it, it's, yeah, it's a little painful. All right, I think I've defeated Zoom's attempts to keep me out of this meeting. Chris, what's going on, man? How are you? Howdy. It's been a while. Yeah. Where, where's Sarah? She went away. Oh, she's here. She's, right. she's... I'm lurking. Lurking. <laughs> wait, wait, who's that guy on the right? Jason Hall. Some dude. Where'd this guy come from? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Steve? Hey, Michael. It's like a reunion here. It's a party, man. Yeah. So yeah, I think we've um, topped our, our highest participation level in quite a while. So I, rather than wait longer, I know usually we have people trickle in uh, after the hour, but um, but yeah, I assume you're all here because you're excited about OCI, which is great. Uh, no, really, I mean, there's been lots of activity lately. Um, and, you know, I think for any regular participant, um, you know that, you know, the agenda has been more and more packed lately. And, you know, we have lots of interesting ideas. I think we're, you know, not to overload the term inflection point, but, you know, there, there's, we've had images, containers, registries for, for a good while now. Um, 
and we have people using them for new interesting things. And I think we're kind of at that point where we're trying to figure out how that fits into the specs and the components that effectively were developed, you know, and published now, you know, a couple of years back. So out of that, it seems like there are um, kind of a couple of key things that, that I think are, are being struggled with uh, on a general level. One is that similar to, you know, and someone can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but similar to, to runtime spec, there, there was kind of this relief of, you know, getting that across the finish line and then kind of a, a loss of, of kind of strong, you know, regular activity. And I think image spec, um, we're in a similar spot where, you know, you look at that maintainers list uh, and I posted that in, in Steve's uh, TOB issue earlier today, um, you know, that list of people do not show up to, to this call. And again, I'm not, this is not about shaming anyone or, or naming, uh, you know, participants. Um, and some of that is time zone pain. You know, we all, we all know these calls are a struggle to figure out how to, where to place them on the 24 hours we, we each have. Um, but we're at a point where a lot of these ideas really need the input, assent, agreement, challenge, whatever, of people who have the commit authority to make changes to these specifications. And, you know, maybe we find out that, and I think Steve has brought this up a few times and he brought it up with me today. There's also the complexity that these things don't live by themselves. So they're not, the image spec does not stand alone. It, inter, it interacts with distribution spec and how registries operate. Um, and so we're dealing with, uh, you know, essentially the complexity of not just getting something quote unquote into image spec, we're dealing with the complexity of how that interoperates with distribution spec changes or registry uh, operations. Um, and so, you know, I, I think what I'd like to do uh, or, or at least suggest, and again, I, I hold no authority here other than, you know, this weekly call has been going on for a very long time. It's morphed into many different things over the years. Different people have led it, kind of orchestrated it. Um, and so, you know, I have, I have this chair role and I feel like it's important to kind of, you know, clear, clear the air, so to speak, that here's where we are. I don't have solutions. I don't have perfect ideas, but, but I have at least a voice to say, I think we need a different model right now because what we're doing is not leading to actual progress uh, for the things that people care about. You know, Steve cares about a certain aspect of, you know, getting Notary V2 and, and the relevant pieces of that represented throughout this sphere of specifications. Um, other people have other ideas. You know, Justin's idea, I think, is very interesting and, and valuable, but is kind of an, another take on these topics. And so we could spend weeks kind of having people present and go around on these things. But I feel like uh, unless we have the set of people who will actually collaborate on these outside of these 60 minutes that we spend here, that's not really that valuable for our time. And so I think we need to move back to some, some model where most of the collaboration we're doing, just like in the old days of Run C or the runtime spec, mostly happens in the GitHub repos, like any other open source project. People propose stuff, maintainers says yes or no, or challenges an idea and other people come in and comment. Um, that's where most of the work of this body should be happening, in, in my opinion. This is my voice for the moment. Um, no, this meeting I, I second be, that. Yeah, thanks, Vincent. So, you know, this meeting is a touch point for all of us to kind of say, okay, what's stuck? Or, you know, how, how come nobody's commenting on, on this thing? Or, you know, I, I came up with this new idea. What are your thoughts? But instead, it seems like we're trying to jam everything through this meeting, like this is the place for approval or disapproval of ideas. And it's really not, because at least at this moment, most of us here are not maintainers on the projects uh, being discussed. Um, 
so it's a great you know it's a great place for discussion it's a great place for um you know bringing new ideas it's a great place for mentioning that that you need help you know figuring something out um but to me i think we need to reorganize around that principle and you know thanks to chris for for opening up that issue to go do a survey on maintainer activity or, or actives yeah um, yep. um you know i think you know it's been so many years where uh, some of the specs stabilized and the folks that were initially involved just rotate and other things. So I think doing an active, just reaching out to the folks who have been active saying, Hey, do you want to step down? And then doing a public call for folks based on kind of TOB guidance of who could kind of step in and fill, uh, fill, yeah. fill spots. Cause there's been some people that have been active that I think should be maintainers. And we've done an okay job for some other things like distribution spec, but image spec for sure has been, has been. Yeah. yeah and it, you know, again, none of this is to say that, that, you know, good work hasn't continued to go on distribution spec is right there on the verge of release which is great um so i i've spent more than enough minutes uh, of the call on this um vincent if you you know you're another old timer that <laughs> may have a few words to add but you know i don't know what this does to today's agenda other than maybe i just blew up everything but but in this in the sense of I am asking for people to help us rethink how to spend the 60 minutes so that we don't end up in a spot where people are wasting their time, hoping that all the silence of this call is approval for their idea and then wondering why nothing's happening. So. Yep, uh, I think that's where traditionally topics were raised if they, um, couldn't get resolved on the GitHub issue. And unfortunately, I mean, like even the list has gotten, gotten pretty quiet. The mailing list, starts with, um, even the list has got kind of quiet, but that, you know, things were either, if they needed long dialogue, they often happened on the mailing list. If they otherwise were just one off working through an issue, then it was done on the GitHub issue. It didn't have to be a whole design discussion. I think we tried that a couple of times and it just, added like yet another dimension of discussion. Um, but the, the calls were just basically a coordinated effort of who's who's involved that we couldn't arrive at a consensus and an async pattern. And that was effectively the use. And there were plenty of times that we were like, would start the call and not have enough topics and adjourn for the week, even during the hot, you know, like getting close to the release for runtime and respect. Or just be like, here's what we're, here's here's the open issues, and let's have like a bug grooming, almost like any given you know, backlog grooming. Let's close some stuff out, add it to milestones. So, but yeah, uh, I mean, like, but like, but like what Chris said, also, but you know, I, I like that approach of call for maintainers because um, we knew, I mean, like, geez, Louise, we knew that. Uh, after the runtime spec and image spec got to V1 that a lot of people were going to um, like take a cognitive break, you know, that there would be some, some a period of cool down. Some folks would probably like step away permanently. Um, and that was partially why, even though it is a little confusing and I'm glad that we're working on the charter also, but of like that there was kind of a technical community that could basically come in and breathe, breathe life back into it um, once we've had a period for it to be out there and adopted folks, see how it looks in production, um, then come back and iterate on it in a future time. Um, and if those, if the maintainership had cooled down, um, if the maintainership had cooled down that we could like, have enough mechanics in place by the TOB or whoever else it is to breathe life back in and get it, get it fired back up again. So that's fine. I think uh, it, obviously the maintainership has been a challenge. I think one of the things that we need to figure out is what process do we want to follow for changes? But I think a bunch of these aren't as simple as it's just image spec and distribution. Like we've kind of acknowledged that registries have been storing things, storing additional things for a while. How do we decouple these two things that were initially you know, built together? Like it made sense in the time where registries only stored images, but 
as we get into signing things. And I'm not even trying to say one signing format should win versus another. The approach has been, you can store other things in a registry and we wanna be able to now link these things. That should be images, but it should be other things as well. And I, I don't know if, I think that's part of the problem is we've been trying to figure out how to work within a, a, a constraint, which doesn't have active maintainers to even weigh in on it. Um, and how do we want to refactor that to allow images, of course, to be stored, but not have the things so coupled that the stuff that Alexa has been trying to drive on the V2 image spec stuff should somehow limit what we do here or even limit what he's trying to do there. I'd say also that, I mean, you know, OCI, you know, we at Docker originally created it largely to standardize things that were already there. And, you know, I think that 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 role has kind of, um, you know, as 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 it kind of said, has kind of, I mean, as, as um, you know, has kind of come to an end ish because we've standardized the things that were there, and that's been great and very successful. But, um, you know, one of the reasons I wrote the dog out of the other day was that you know there are some fundamental design problems that the formats that we standardize are simply not upgradable, and we you know we've been struggling with making changes because of those fundamental design things that were made a very long time ago at docker for entirely other reasons than providing a long-term upgradable future-proof path that people can build new and better things and i think a lot of um you know i think there's a there's a there's a huge amount of really exciting work around new image specs but it's simply very very difficult for us to actually have a path where you know clients and registries can update at different speeds and things can actually work for people and right. things don't break and I, and that, those problem i mean that sort of fundamental problem is something that really does need to be resolved so we can you know allow all the innovations that people want to bring forward and I think you know that are really exciting and have been you know um bubbling and like with ideas but recently like people have really compelling reasons why they want to implement things like new image formats new compression formats like there are things that have um as well as things like signing but like even things with images and things where we have now where we're just you know I think there's a there's some things I would love to see in production that we're just ha having great difficulty getting getting over the line because of these kinds of reasons. And sure. I think that's, you know, I think it's a, we've come to this sort of point where the historical reasons and the going forward reasons are kind of diverging and we need to make it work for the next five years. So, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was thinking something about that today. I mean, so, I think there, there's kind of this tactical, can we solve the image spec maintainers issue, which I, I think we can't, we know we can do that. It's, you know, some work to figure that out. It's almost like there, there are going to be a set of things that can fit into the steady state incremental improvements of image spec for some, from gen, general things. But I always saw Alexa's presentations, you know, here in this meeting and, and others who got involved as being like kind of thinking about the next generation, which I think Justin is what you're, you know, the proposal you put together is essentially, you know, if we knew everything we knew now, here, here's how we might have laid out, you know, these concepts. And it's almost like that's a separate, like that isn't something that, that you need two LGTMs and you merge in image spec. Like that is a new kind of idea. It's almost something we should treat as unique from the general flow of of, of the various sub projects of OCI, um, well, and that to me, I almost think that does need, in essence, uh, I I don't want to make it sound boring, standard stuff, but like a working group that says, okay, let's hash this out. Who are who who are the stakeholders? Uh, maybe it, maybe it fits in this call, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's something that gets iterated on. You know, and I think Steve, maybe that's where you're hitting into this. Like, you know, what's the what's the decision points for this? How do we decide what happens, what doesn't happen? Well, like that that seems separate. Go ahead, Vincent. 
Yeah, no, I was just like, there's, so, things like, you know, the art of the, the table of different artifacts and like media types, mon types for, were split out because some of those different objects and even ways that they're pushed could, could iterate independent of the spec itself. Um, and we're, cause we're trying to figure out like some of the silly challenges of just like how to handle Simver for some of these specifications, which was not, not a clean match, but I, you know, like even when it comes down to the API and you know, like Justin, you're saying of like some of the pieces that were in that design process and where we even arrived at the V2 schema two and or what's it now OCI distribution is that I think some of those well can't hear. If somebody were to want to rewrite that API to experiment, it's wholly possible for them to do that. Um, I think there's, there's we, we find this interesting spot where there has been a whole, uh, a hold onto not breaking everybody in the community or existing client versus enabling ourselves for the future. And there's actually a lot that we can do in that space with what we already have and have worked you know, for the last seven or eight years on. And going too much down the path of just discussing it and, you know, having hypotheticals is not productive and going down the path of wholly re-implementing it and then bringing it back into this, uh, you know, this open governance, open forum is, is kind of getting the hopes up also in a different direction. And part of this, I feel like is the contentious that the part is that we're trying to find the middle path together because we all have personal time invested, a lot of company time invested, and like it takes some kind of iteration of how do we do things that are actually enabling ourselves and others together with like kind of a lockstep. Here's what we have invested. Here's what you know would be small iteration. And Ready to have dinner? Yeah. Oh. But um, it, like finding effectively the middle path of all these different things, not just having so much discussion that it's not actually solving anything technical yet, or having something that just goes off and effectively wants to throw it all away and start over, um, which people are welcome to do both of those. It's just not at that point actually being a, a group, group consensus decision. Those are fragmenting tech paths. And I, I hope to keep it. Uh, since it's past. I like the idea of forming working groups, I think, as Phil was saying, because, yeah, previously, if you look at all the specs and how they came along, they effectively had working groups at some point that generated and pushed these specs out to users and production. And all of the specs that have been accepted today have had these production use cases. Um, before even coming to OCI and becoming standardized. So today we're in kind of a weird state, especially with the image spec. And um, we saw this happen a little bit with B2 where a, kind of an informal working group formed, went out, defined something that, that could be actually used and, and, and proven out. Um, but I think if we had some sort of formalization of that process, then we could actually see some new and innovative stuff come from OCI. So if, if we had a way to form working groups that were actually like voted on by the TOB, scoped and had some defined owners, then maybe we can move forward on some of these ideas um, that aren't necessarily specs, but could come out with drafts that uh, could go and be implemented. So I, I see that's kind of the problem today is like nobody wants to take, take on the risk of defining a new spec um, that may or may not be accepted by OCI in the future or become the standard. Um, but at the same time, OCI isn't really the place to take on that risk either of something that's completely unproven. So I think it, like basically bringing you know, having conversations here and incremental incremental pieces of what we already have 
is the big piece of it. I'm really glad that we got so much. We talked about having conformance kind of pieces for the runtime spec and uh, the image spec over the years, but I'm glad that we made so much progress on the distribution spec. And really, I think that's basically what I think would be the ideal spot to work towards is like how 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 compatible are these fixes and making sure that you know like effectively some of these proof of concepts or otherwise introduced are not breaking changes because I know that was even some of the some of the recent discussion points were were around this also and it kind of allows a, a, at least a conversation place to take a conversation to take place and it, it at least mimic maybe the working groups mimic the, the SIGs, kind of the Kubernetes CNCF style. It's because they have the comfort of the, you know, not breaking API or whatever. And we're kind of loosely coupled against several different projects that I, like runtime to the kernel or whatever it is. Like we don't quite have a don't break the API type place. It takes all the humans involved to create what, what that appetite is for the amount of change or the amount of scope. And that's the first question you have to So, uh, less this becomes mostly esoteric, like, let's think practically, like, you know, what, say we adopt kind of this working group model, it, it sounds like we could look at the last month of agendas and say, here's areas where people are trying to innovate. You know, is it is it time to come up with that list of like, what are these kind of concrete areas that people are, are struggling with to get changes in? And can we, you know, form something around each one of those that, that you know, by next week or two weeks from now have, you know, some more specific, you know, a paragraph, what it is we're trying to achieve and who's owning, who, who's, because I, I feel like then this meeting could become more of, of hopefully something, you know, practical that, you know, if you look at the agenda and say, the thing I care about isn't even on this week's agenda, I, that, you know, I may listen in, but maybe not. That way, you know, maybe there's even a flow to kind of the month of OCI weekly calls that, you know, there's distribution focus, there's V2 new idea focus, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, uh, it sounds like maybe that that helps. And then this meeting is a bring back, you know, what did we do? Where, where are we stuck? Is Do you need help from TOB, from maintainers of a specific project? Uh, does that sound like something worth Flushing out. I, th I think so. I mean, like we, I feel like even the OCI V2 tried to do similar and it kind of split out into a number of different work groups. Um, they had effectively a working doc where they tracked all those different working groups and had, you know, the names of people involved and they kind of rolled up various pieces. Um, each one of those became incremental conversations. Like we've seen that even in some of like the coding and other other like either PRs or issues where that's kind of rolled back into the it, to the repos. Uh, that was a similar model. Um, uh, probably, I think the confusing part is like where where and how those docs are tracked. Are they just Google Docs or they mark down files, all the logistics, but having maybe a little bit of guidance about that um, would help just you know, show patterns for how folks do that and then roll back in statuses. Um, I think some amount of that also, Phil, is, you know, as a lot of this is also as we breathe, breathe enough life or with enough championing it to um, even see those, see, see the status of those working groups through is if we, if it adds too much process, you know, and we're in the 
process of breathing life into all the different areas that would need traction or review, that's it would be difficult, but I think it's still feasible. I think um, once, once you figure out what those working groups are, it'd be nice if on this meeting, you could do kind of a stand-up style, uh, like no more than five minutes per working group, just say that's what happened this week and let the, let the kind of discussions or um, like the discussions right now are free for all, you know, it's like whoever gets to that hack MD first. And I'm wondering if we could have like the working group designates someone in that working group to go deliver like the announcement for them that week. And then you don't even have to be on all the meetings either. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's the part I, I'd love to, to fix here is that, you know, there are a lot of areas of interest. And right now we seem to be in this agenda crunch of like everyone wants to kind of come here and say their, their idea or explain their piece. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, have, having some specific focus areas where you're actually talking to the people who can, what's the right, make decisions is a strong word, but, you know, <laughs> talking, talking with a group of people who all have a vested interest in that area. And then this meeting, you can bring back those five minutes that lets, you know, everyone be aware of like kind of where that's heading. And that, and that may be a, a vehicle to get more interest for a specific area because then it becomes a much more practical, oh, I, I see what you're trying to accomplish. And yeah, we have a product we're trying to develop and we should get involved in that. Um, so yeah, and I, I agree with Vincent. I, the the danger here is to make it, you know, another thing that people have to figure out uh, following a set of processes and posting statuses somewhere. But I, I I hope and think we can make that fairly lightweight. And maybe even Steve's kind of NV two. You know, they got their own Hack MD and have their own meeting. And uh, again, there's a little bit of cross CNCF collaboration there, but. Um, you know, that model of like, okay, you know, you've got enough to discuss that your own little working group can take that offline and, and just bring back status. When I look at some of the other projects like, you know, Kubernetes and some of the others, I mean, I think there's, I hear some cool things we're doing with what, what exists. And then there's, because it just, there's enough flexibility built into the system. I, I wonder how much we're at a point now where we need to enable enough flexibility so people don't have to come back here to get approval. They basically can just show off something or do. Because I think that's part of the bottleneck we're starting to see is the only way I can get my thing in is if I make this change. And that, you know, and is that change specific to that? Does it have other implications? As opposed to can we get some changes in that enable people to have extensibility without having to come back to get approval, as opposed to, hey, let me show off what I pulled off. I think that's one of the challenges we're facing at this point. And, and it, whether it be the image specific spec and the stuff that they want to do in V2 or what we're trying to do in registries to store whatever somebody wants to stuff into it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that's that's why I started, you know, calling it some sort of inflection point. And Derek sort of clarified that, you know, that it's almost as if phase one of OCI kind of closed and we have to figure out how phase two works because it's very different. It's not, I'm bringing something that a million people already use and let's figure out how to like put that in a nice standardized format. You know, it's, yeah. So there's a tension there because we have, I think there are OCI and, you know, yay us, you know, we, we, we have this, this mark that people are actually attracted to now. I want my thing to say OCI or I'm part of the OCI image format or spec. And so we, we have this new draw of, oh, I should get my thing in so we can make this product. You know, it's, it's almost like we're sw switching to a backwards model where people want it in OCI before there's really the validation that that's kind of a good way that things should work or could work. Yep, that's, I feel like that's some of those conversations that I think were even hypotheticals that we had 
four years ago. Now, you know, various folks have experimented with and said, actually, this improves X, Y, and Z. And it, I think it would do the same for everybody. And it wouldn't break anybody. And like, we're ripe, we're ripe and ready for those kind of conversations as well. And sometimes those don't even need whole working groups. It's just, that's, that's just actually being all on, as I say this a lot, being all on the same side of the table is that it's like, actually let's, let's for a second, think what's, what's best for the community here. And uh, kind of like carry that conversation forward. And if that means a work group, great. And if it means just like um, having active maintainers engaged, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, and I, I think uh, Chris brought up a good point in the chat. I mean, there. I think we still have this decision tree that I think is hard to figure out with, can my thing go, go into a, a existing spec? Hey, you know, I'll fill out your form that I promise not to break, you know, current clients and servers and all, all this. And, and I guess, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe, Part of that can be solved with templating and GitHub to kind of answer a bunch of questions, but yeah, that, that's a tricky one. Active maintainers will help for sure. In, yes. in some in some, some ways, uh, but you still have this issue where you have a fundamental, you know, specs that are should be stable and not necessarily break people with the desire to do fundamentally new, interesting, you know, things that kind of the ecosystem demands, and we have to have to somehow bridge these two things and kind of enable innovation while also ensuring um, stability. I have, I have a really dumb question. Yep. So what I understand about the low level implementation details of the format, the spec, and that that could be printed on a small postage stamp in you know, a giant Sharpie, right? But I care about it from the experience point of view. If we roll out, we imagine like we meet, we group, rolling groups, come up with the plans, right? At the end of the day, if it's not something where the majority of the clients are either forward compatible with changes that we've got or are self-updating to be into the new thing, and there's a whole set of questions around that, it doesn't matter. We're just masturbating in spec, right? Or making up incompatibilities or balkanizing the space that we were in, right? None of those are good stories. And so... Maybe this is a meta problem. Maybe it's not even solvable. I don't know. But like, I don't want balkanization because we can do that on our own. Thank you very much. Right? None, nobody needs any help to do that. And I don't want a sort of strata of customers who are trailing behind and frozen on some version of something and not keeping up with the regard because that's another way of getting the same balkanization only now version oriented as opposed to whatever. And so to me that like, there's a lot of technical details that we have to figure out and a lot of clarity around what problems we're trying to solve, but there's a really fundamental one of, are we actually stuck in a situation where we're frozen on a spec that isn't gonna make a difference if we update it because nobody's gonna move anyway? There's my dumb question. I, 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 try. I mean, my view is if the OCI gets together and everyone says, hey, this is V2, we're all gonna you know, do this and support this, then mission, you know, potentially mission accomplished. Uh, if, if people go out on their own and kind of build their own things, obviously you're going to have that balkanization, but I think the group has to come together and decide um, if they're going to do something. Uh, forward compatibility, I, I, that would be great. Don't know if that, you know, is, is, is possible if, depending what you do in, in, in the next rep. But yeah, I think as a group, we have to agree. I, I, um, I'm actually asking a yeah. slightly, like, I agree that yeah. this group has to agree, otherwise it's just implicitly balkanized. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But like, Let's say we all agree and have a V2 spec. Great. Yeah. What's the rollout plan? What's the go-to market with like the bazillions of people using the current V1 stuff? How many years will it be before we can count on V2 being there? Like, because otherwise it's like, great, we've solved this problem, but you have to upgrade to V2 and nobody wants to for another thousand of stupid reasons or whatever. Well, I, mean, I think well, this I mean, is where from... the, the use case and the, the you know customers will opt in for what's valid and what's not. I mean, things get delayed, not because it's just the process of delay that things get delayed because it just wasn't considered to be that useful. And I think if there, nothing's stopping us from, like, what happens at the time where what Justin was saying is that we go off, we incubate some ideas based on what's there. 
we get feedback and we continue on that design. And as it looks more generally useful, we bring it to the group, hey, here's some ideas. And you know, as that adoption drives, you know, the, the various providers of these tools will adopt things that customers are asking, customers and users are asking for. So I don't think it's necessarily time latency built in. It's more on is the demand useful enough for people to want to get it sooner than later? Um, my feeling is the time scale for change on existing things. We've got some past history. We added multi-arch images, which um, it took maybe, and we added, I mean, we changed the image format from V1 to, you know, the registry format from V1 to V2 in the first place. Like those things, they took a few years for to roll through. Um, I think some of the things that people are working on have more of a push for people to upgrade because there's actually like bigger advantages probably, but I think we're on that sort of time scale. So we don't want to like make things that are, we don't want to change things all the time for existing use cases. There are, we are trying to enable a whole lot of new use cases you just can't do now. And I think those are, I mean, I think, you know, artifacts have been driving a lot of this because they, those are just things you couldn't, you can't do and they're not breaking anyone. They're just enabling new things. Um, and so I think those can move at a slightly, you know, a slightly faster pace. But even then they've got issues like, you know, Helm moving into registry has, has been a slow, you know, that's going on the order of a few years change because it's an existing thing. Um, but so, you know, so I think we, we need to plan on that, those kind of timescales. And they look at the rate at people, which people update Kubernetes, it's not that quick. Um, so we can't, we can't plan for things to be short, but they do mostly happen uh, over time. I think the respect to the community stuff is they did build in some extensibility, so you know, all the emission controllers, and I won't even try to list all the ones that I'm not sure all the extensibility points. I think that's, that, that kind of focus. Some of them came some. late. Fair. But, but we don't, <laughs> they don't all come to the KA working group because once the extensibility was in, there's just a, a playing field for them to use what's already there. Um, but I think, you know, we can innovate, you know, in isolation and let that drive some standards and as we get feedback on it. But if you use your multi-arc thing, that did take off pretty quick because there was a huge value in it. Well, it kind of took off quick and a little bit, but it also, if you look at like some registries didn't implement it for a long Sorry, time. Sorry, I actually meant, I, you said multi-arc and you said that the whole time. I was thinking the multi-step builds which a completely different thing, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. But that was a change that you guys drove and it did get very, very quick adoption because it had a high, high need. Multi-arc is a different problem. Yeah, it's fair. yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, multi-arc didn't have as high a need. Like, so it took longer, but it eventually happened when, you know, again, it was need driven. Like people needed new feature, new feature was specific, it was in the spec, it, there were implementations, there was code when you need it, eventually get around to doing it. I think there's another interesting point, uh, Michael, to answer your question in terms of the go-to-market and the end users of this. I think it really depends on where we defined our end users because if the end users of these specifications are the um, large platforms that are developing tooling around this, then what we are doing is going to market by defining this and talking about it with those people in the room and moving the industry with the specification and the you know test tooling and reference implementations and such as we go ahead and implement these things into our own tooling. All that said, um, if you're talking about an end user who may consume it, good Lord, I hope they never need to know whether or not this is an you know, container image spec something or another versus, uh, versus others. But generally the open source projects don't work on a go to market particularly because this is about open source. This isn't the, this isn't the product, it's the project which supports each of our products around it. I think- Yes, you, it's much think easier that... to, sorry. Uh, it's much easier to ask for resources if there's an actual spec to find, and it's less easy, but still easier to ask for resources if there is a working group proposing a spec that has been 
uh, like empowered as a working group. And it's almost impossible to ask for resources if it's if it looks like it's one guy asking filing a pull request against a repository for a spec. Yep, that's a good point. Totally fair. So uh, something tells me we're not doing a whole lot of presentations today. <laughs> Sorry for those who joined eagerly awaiting Justin's hottest new draft um, or any of the other, uh, not to not to promote Justin, I'm sorry, uh, other valuable content. <laughs> um, okay, so what are, but what are the big takeaways? I mean, there's there's good stuff here. I, yeah. I think breathing breathing life into like literally we we discussed this and knew that this was going to be a thing that there would be a slowdown period and there'd be a rekindling at some point and apparently we're there. Um, even though there's been like constant activity, it's been on all things around it. And so now we're at this point. You know, we've even almost uh, anticipated it because we've been like scrolling through a lot of these different issues that are open, like how to clean up the charter, how to make this more clear, you know, even some drafts about this stuff, whether to, you know, what to do with some of the different projects or repos that we have that have um, arguably slowed to a crawl and are not used, that's fine. Um, so uh, I think just kind of beginning the flurry of activity and kind of championing is, is something that's really the big big thing that's going to drive a lot of this stuff and working groups and all that kind of like having any kind of process templates for that would fall out of that. Uh, Yeah, and Phil, you're the you're, you're the you're the TOB chair, but I'm also happy to like you know, continue you know, play a role in, in championing and otherwise, uh, despite despite the the last year or so. Of, well, me personally, I I I I, I intentionally tried to you know be less involved for right after the 1.0 just to give myself a cognitive break. Um, but then particularly the last year have been a little bit more uh, occupied, um, but happy to jump in and be more involved. Yeah, thanks. With the, I, so yeah, I think takeaways, we, we need to hopefully not belabor this to, to death, but find a simple kind of straightforward, here's what working groups look like, here's a framework for how they operate, the, we can use the TOB mailing list and issues to hash that out so it's public. Other people can comment uh, and get involved as ne as necessary. Um, I think the other takeaway is is just well, I think we're all we'll all be interested and in, in help in any way with Chris and Amy with uh, you know the call for kind of maintainership, some more activity around that. Um, and then I think hopefully we can turn that around, you know, without letting a lot of other time uh, go off the calendar so that, you know, we can restructure this meeting so that people who attend here uh, feel like they're actually, you know, getting value for their time. Uh, I know, you know, I definitely want to hear more from Justin on his doc and these other changes. And I know Sargon has brought some good stuff. So, you know, let's, let's try and figure out a way to, to make all those constituents have a, have a place here. Sarah, is that a hand raise or just an emoji? I, I don't know. Zoom. No, right. that one's a for, for legit hand raise. Um, so one of the things we didn't address here and I know is, um, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm overstating, but I, I'm pretty sure is a, um, goal of at least some of the groups is also speed. It's, I mean, we're, we Microsoft are much more um, okay with the, let's call it solid pace that OCI continues to move at, um, you know, or stayed pace, how about that? Um, but I know that there are other groups that are being challenged by, um, by the slowness. Um, is there something in the short term that we can do with that? Or do we, because I, I fear 
with this group and with some others that um, where when we say, okay, we need to go back to governance, we need to go back to like, how do we do this or write, a, you know, update the charter, that kind of thing. Um, that, that that feels like delay tactics as opposed to um, progress. So I just want to make sure we address that in some way instead of um, just saying, yes, let's go back to the rules because we spend too much, if we spend too much time rules lawyering, then of course we don't get anything done. Yeah, I, th I think a quick response to that one, Sarah, is like having this meeting currently rolling of how we're kind of how we're doing it could kind of continue while orthogonally the OCI TOB, who basically has the power to change rules anyway, it goes out and kind of comes up with a quick mechanism for working groups and yep. cleans up the maintainer list. But I, I do think like anytime you get a meeting with, you know, 15, 20, 20 plus people in the industry that kind of basically control how containers works, uh, you keep that meeting going. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we could go clean up some of the governance stuff that's just, it's basically governance debt um, from, from over the yep. years. Yep. Um, so that would be it's my thing, like, like keep this going. <laughs> So. Yeah, it's like every nonprofit I've been a part of. You join the board, you go, huh, um, are we doing the things our bylaws say we're doing or our governance rules say we're doing? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we could handle the, the changes with the TOB on, on a sidebar meeting, but I would continue okay. this until that work um, gets yep. done. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, de definitely my purpose in, in even having this discussion today is that I actually feel like we're uh, like people are, are getting what they're paying for, so to speak, in that we're having lots and lots of discussions here, but it's not leading to actual things happening that people expect and want to, when they work with open source, they expect at least you're going to get a rejection or, or PR closed or, or whatever. And none of that is really happening at least, you know, in pockets of, of the OCI. And again, I, I, I want to be clear that there's a lot of great work happening here. It's just, I don't want this to become a perception that like, if I come to Wednesday and present something, that's somehow how I get things done in OCI, because it's not. Yeah. We at least have time for Josh's announcement. Uh, so we don't have to carry that over to April. Sure. Yeah. So the distribution spec RC2, 1.0 RC2 just went out an hour or two ago. Um, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it for 1.0. There's a few like cleanup tasks and I'm hoping to cut a RC3 or put a vote out for RC3 by the end of the week. And if there's no rejections on that, that should be the 1.0. If they're just nits, we can probably just go to a release, right? Or is there a process issue? Um, I, I, we could certainly uh, release RC2. Um, there's just a few missing links and old code. Um, and I, I looked up, <clears throat> sorry, I looked at the governance somewhere in uh, the org and it's for major releases it has to have three rcs mm -hmm. i believe so okay. we would need a rc3 anyway it, it could be the same commit as rc2 but there are a few things to clean up so um, i'm running a release josh i think that's one of the first yes spec I, release one of the first spec releases that i did not do anything yes, the, la the <laughs> last time i had to cry to vince because i accidentally squashed something and it was a bad time. So yeah, thanks. So. We, we, we could average against the run C release candidates and, and, and call it call it good. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, they're not here. So we, we, <laughs> we shouldn't pick on them too much. Um, but yeah, I, I guess like the final thing to say on that is uh, it's mostly typo cleanup type work. If you feel very strongly, um, you know, it's up to the, I guess, maintainers to decide if it's worth holding up a release. But if you feel so strongly that something should get in there prior um, now and tomorrow and Friday is like a great time to do that. So any last minute reviews, I appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Yep. So I, I feel like the, 
the onus is on TOB and kind of OCI leadership to take the next step here. So if you have strong opinions, you're like, this is a topic I don't see people working on, or here's, you know, something I've proposed and nothing's happened. Like, this is the week to use the TOB mailing list, or I don't care, ping me on Slack, talk in the general channel on OCI Slack. Like, this is when we need your feedback, because I think, yeah, I don't want to waste anyone's time with dragging this out for weeks or months. Like, we'll work on a proposal, we'll make it public, you know, do it in public so people can comment on what it looks like to have a working group. Then let's get the definition of what those are, who's participating and just get that started. Uh, and, you know, just like anything, uh, this may not solve all the issues, but let's at least try something rather than just keep doing the same thing because we're not getting what we want out of what we're, how we're doing it now. So uh, feedback welcome as usual. I just say don't, don't don't feel the need to do too much. It seems like getting active maintainers would solve like ninety percent of the stuff, and you, know, you risk overcorrecting and overfitting if you try to design something too elaborate at this point to address some problems that might just be solved with more interest and activity. Yeah, yeah, Dan, good point. I mean, there the and yeah, I get we're using a term that's used all over the place. So working groups mean a lot of different things to a lot of us. So I'm I hope. When people hear that here, we're talking about something very simple and lightweight that just kind of shifts some ownership on things that don't fit neatly into this is a PR on this repo and here's the maintainers. Because I, I think that's what we're trying to understand is there are things that are broader than that, you know, normal cycle of, of open source PR, approve, merge. Any other thoughts? Mm -hmm. Good discussion. Glad everybody showed up. Yeah, nice to see some folks today. Yeah, it's good to bubble up. This is definitely like getting together a whole bunch of people I haven't seen in a while. And, you know, hopefully we can go from a crisis model to a, um, like, I think this working groups will lead to a better path. Um, we have a lot of things to talk about, including, um, you know, just things that have come up recently, but also, you know, the last time we met for a crisis meeting, which wasn't directly OCI related, but was related to the Docker Hub situation again, like, you know, we still have, I think, industry things to talk about there as well. So looking forward to having that conversation too. Does it always come back to Justin? <laughs> I, I, like if, if we want to accept a, 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 as a you know, informal consensus of the meeting that's Justin's fault as a working model for everything. Like that I, it seems like a pretty shortcut approach to things, but I don't know. Again, I'm new to this. Justin, you should speak up at some point here. And, yeah, you know, I think it, that could work. I think it's, you know. <laughs> it scales It scales really well. It's order one, right? Like everything is like, you know, question, problem, Justin's fault. It'd be hard to justify that as governance model. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for distribution, distribution. Now we get now we get to start distribution too. Yeah. By the way, look, if anyone else wants to be a maintainer on distribution, distribution, we're still happy to accept more maintainers. And we, particularly from OCI, people who want to work on OCI things and distribution, I, I um, so just ping me if you're interested. Great. All right, y'all. Cool. Good chat. See you online. All right, cool. thanks everybody.